Excellent nation. Uh, Steve Bassett is our special guest. It's always great having Steve on the show. Uh, Steve, and I don't know if people tell you this enough, but thank you for doing the great work that you do. It's sincerely appreciated by millions of people. Oh, well, thank you, Rob. And, and before we wrap up, I want to make sure that I once again sing the highest praise for uh, Robert Hastings and mm-hmm. Captain Robert Salas for putting together one of the most important press conferences on this subject ever held anywhere. Uh, it is the third major witness press conference. The first was held in May of 2001 by the Disclosure Project. The second was held in November of 2007 by Leslie Kane and James Fox. This is the third one, and this is a big one. Um, uh, and let me also mention that right now there are three books recently out. I mean, these are re- books within the last, I think, 12 months, or, and, and, and sooner, mm-hmm. uh, that in and of themselves, if, if they were read, by any any editor or reporter uncompromised on this issue should be enough to launch multi-part series in papers all across the country. And I'm referring to Robert Hastings' UFOs and Nukes, uh, then came Leslie Kane's UFOs, Generals, Pilots, and Government Officials Speak Out, with a foreword by John Podesta, and uh, a book that will go on sale in uh, a couple of days, uh, well, I call it all has gone, just went on sale. I'm referring to AD After Disclosure by Richard Dolan. These three books alone are more than enough to make it clear to any journalist that the biggest story of all time is breaking right now underneath their nose. And it's time to get on the side of the people and start bringing this information out. And so my hat's off to Bob and Bob and, and, uh, we're, we're going to support, uh, the media coverage of this to the extent we can. So, so we've got, we've got about a minute left, uh, Stephen. First of all, why do you think the government is so paranoid that the, the people of this planet find out the truth? Paranoia is probably not the word. It's a mixture of arrogance. Uh, it's a mixture of overcaution. Um, they, they know that half the people probably in the world right now already know the ETs are real, and, you know, within the context of their education mm-hmm. and background. 20% in a poll by, by uh, Gallup, no, by, uh, I think Gallup, yes, that believe that ETs are actually living amongst us. I don't know if that's the case, but that's a profound statement. No, this, this is a highly complicated, hugely geopolitical maneuver that is overdue. It should have happened. It couldn't happen before ni- in 91. Mm-hmm. I, there's no way that anybody inside military intelligence community was going to sell disclosure while there were 40,000 nuclear, actually 80, uh, 80,000 nuclear warheads at the peak, active and ready to be launched uh, across the poles between the Soviet Union and the United States. They just weren't going to do it. And so the the disclosure of that wasn't even possible until after the Cold War ended. So we're really only 19 years into the period when disclosure should have happened. It's not an inordinate amount of time. Uh, But the fact is, is that it's a complicated world. Steve, There's I, a lot of considerations, and, and they just haven't done it. But I can tell you, they're running out of time, Rob. It's going right. to happen and happen soon. We're, we've run out of time, Steve. Thanks very much. If there's anything important that comes up, give me a call. We'll get you back on as soon as we can. Take care, good buddy. Absolutely. All right. Bye-bye now. Steve Bassett, www.paradigmresearchgroup.org. And I'll be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away. <laughs> 